Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. This is your friendly music station, KIXI. Dial 91 AM or 96 FM, Seattle. 11 o'clock. CBS News, citing what he termed selective news leaks, presidential attorney James St. Clair Thursday demanded the House Judiciary Committee immediately open its impeachment hearings to the public. Chairman Peter Rodino refused, but said he was taking steps to avoid more leaks, some of which dealt with White House tapes the committee members were hearing. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. The Judiciary Committee met again in secret Thursday night and listened to some more tapes. Emerging from the session, several members were asked by reporters if they heard any ethnic or racial slurs in one of the conversations between John Dean and President Nixon. One member, Robert McClory, said yes, but declined to elaborate. McClory did add, he didn't say anything against the Irish so far. More news after this message. Whether you're planning to paint your home inside or out, now's the perfect time to buy all the paint you'll need. It's National True Test Paint Week at True Value Hardware Stores, and they have quality paints at special sale prices. Hi, Pat Summerall here with the details. Choose True Test Standard Interior Latex, for instance. It applies easily, dries fast, leaves no painty odor. Provides a soft, dull finish that's washable. Painting tools clean in soap and water. Choose pastels or white, get two gallons for just $9. True Value Hardware Stores have True Test Standard Latex house paint on sale, too. It resists fumes, mildew, alkali, blistering, and fading. Dries dust-free quickly, leaving a low-sheen finish. In white or ready-mixed colors, you get two gallons for just $9. Choose either or both True Test Standard Interior or Exterior Latex Paint. Two gallons for $9 during National True Test Paint Week, exclusively at participating True Value Hardware Stores. He's in the yellow pages. Former Attorney General Richard Kleindienst Thursday pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor charge, refusing to answer Senate questions about the ITT case. Kleindienst entered the guilty plea on the misdemeanor charge after plea bargaining with the special Watergate prosecutor's office, which was investigating his statements before the Senate Judiciary Committee and the Watergate grand jury. Reporters asked prosecutor Leon Jaworski if Kleindienst could have not been indicted for perjury. The decision was that this was the appropriate charge, and this is as far as I can go. Mr. Jaworski, wasn't this a contorted reading of the statute, however, the refusal to testify? He didn't refuse to testify. He lied, didn't he? No, the, uh, the uh, charge, if you will read it closely, says that he refused to testify accurately. Now, you just construe that yourself. There appears to be some question whether Kleindienst will face disbarment proceedings in Arizona where he's licensed to practice law. The Arizona Bar Association says it'll look into the matter. Transit workers in Chicago have gone on strike, a move that will affect millions. A report from Lynn Walter of station WBBM in Chicago. Chicago's thousands of buses and rapid transit trains stopped rolling at midnight when their drivers and motormen hit the bricks. The strike was called by the Amalgamated Transit Union when negotiations over a cost of living escalator remained unresolved at the appointed time of the strike. The talks continued until a half hour later, then bargainers for both sides emerged to say they were at a stalemate. A mediator failed to help. 
So with the rush hour just a couple of hours away, at least two million Chicagoans who daily rely on the CTA will now have to find alternate means of transportation. Already, Chicago cab companies are doing a land office business, and police are being called out to deal with what is expected to be the worst traffic jam to hit Chicago in many years. Picket lines have been established at all CTA facilities, and the strikers vow to remain off the job until their demands are fully met. This is Len Walter for CBS News, Chicago. This is the first time in Chicago history that all mass transit facilities have been out at the same time. Arabs are threatening their own retaliation for Israel's retaliation Thursday. Israeli jets pounded refugee camps in southern Lebanon, striking back after the Arab commando attack Wednesday that left 24 Israelis dead. Palestinian leaders are promising what they term swift revenge. In Cairo, the Middle East News Agency says the Arab world will not stand idly by. Now this. At Monroe, we named our load leveler stabilizing units accurately. Load leveler for the steel coil spring that carries a lot of weight, like towing, small cars with big car loads, or any car with front or rear end sag. Stabilizing unit for the heavy duty Monroe shock, working with the coil spring to deliver a smooth, more stable ride. Monroe's load leveler stabilizing unit. We named it so you'd know what it does. Monroe automatic ride control. your gift list. Your neighbor's child is two, your niece is six, and nephew is seven. But before you go to the toy store, there's something else you should do. Write Toys, Washington, D.C., 20207 for a free booklet on toy safety. That's Toys, Washington, D.C., 20207. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. Even a thief has a certain amount of professional pride, as we learn in the case of Dennis Evans. He's serving a term at the Rhode Island State Prison for robbery. A Providence newspaper recently published an item about Evans' case and reported he was caught on the spot during a drugstore holdup. Evans wrote the newspaper protesting the story. He says he was not caught on the spot, but was arrested a mile away and an hour and a half later. Evans says the report of his being caught on the spot is, in his words, an affront to my professionalism and skill. Doug Polling, CBS News. CBS for the Great Northwest, KIXI, AM and FM, Seattle. And the weather outlook for the Puget Sound area continued cool. A few showers and chance of isolated thunder showers tonight. Chance of showers tomorrow and Saturday with partial clearing at times. Lows in the low 40s tonight and tomorrow night. Highs tomorrow and Saturday in the upper 50s. Variable winds 5 to 15 miles an hour. Currently, the temperature is 50 degrees. Time now for KIXI CBS Mystery Theater, brought to you in part by your friendly Tradewell store. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome again through the creaking door. The sound which always signifies the beginning of another tale of danger and suspense. Being in the mystery business, our fables often deal with crime and criminals. This time, it's a thief. But a thief with a very definite difference. For Ruth Moody is a young lady who walks into department stores and simply helps herself. Simply because she can't help herself. Yes, you've heard of her peculiar ailment. It's called kleptomania, the neurotic impulse to steal. But kleptomania isn't the only trouble in store for Ruth. I got a proposition for you, Mrs. Moody. How would you like to make a thousand bucks? A thousand dollars? How? Well, you do like I tell you, you're going to get a thousand bucks in the mail. But if you don't, Wed, your husband may not be able to make a living anymore. You uh, get what I mean? No. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about stealing stuff, Mrs. Moody. About that bad habit of yours. Now, we got a use for that habit. And you'd better listen to what we have in mind. <laughs> Mr. 
mystery drama, The Trouble with Ruth, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Marion Seldes. It is sponsored in part by The Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal and New Sugar-Free Diet 7-Up. I'll be back shortly with Act One. I want that sinus medicine. Headache tablets? No, sinus medicine. Sinus tablets. Helps the headache and the pressure. Oh, you mean sign-off. Exactly. Headache pain is one thing. A sinus headache is something else. Sometimes your whole face can seem to throb with pain. You want relief. Take sign-off tablets. S-I-N-E-O-F-F. The sinus medicine that gives you a full dose of pure aspirin plus a sinus drainer. Sign off. The sinus medicine that helps relieve sinus pain while you drain. And sign off doesn't stop there. Have you tried sign off sinus spray? The fastest known form of sinus congestion relief. It works in seconds. That sign off sinus spray. When sinus flares up, use sign off tablets and spray only as directed. S I N E O F F. Sign off. Exactly. Sign off. The sinus medicines in the bright red box. Sony thought you'd like to know. The sounds that a music system produces can be no better than its separate components. That's a fact. If you want to produce great sound, the system components must be separated. That's a myth. A myth that goes back to when electronic elements were so massive, each component was given its own separate box. Today, it's a whole new bag. Sony Component Music Systems will handle up to 13 methods of reproducing sound integrated into one beautiful hardwood cabinet. Sound with a brilliance and quality that'll make your world of music a better place to listen in. Audio Sales at 2405 Broadway in Everett is your full-line stereo compact dealer. Dick Alkire and his sales staff will personally demonstrate their wide range of Sony compact stereo systems when you visit the store. When it's a Sony system, music in stereo or quad is a very enjoyable experience. We're in Barnett's department store in the downtown shopping district. And if it looks and sounds like a battlefield this morning, it's no different from any other Saturday. Well, maybe a little more so, since Barnett is running its semi-annual clearance sale, just as it does every other month. It's the ideal place and time for bargain hunters, and unfortunately, for shoplifters. Uh, pardon me, miss? Yes? Uh, would you mind coming with me just for a moment, please? What for? Uh, our assistant manager, Mr. Hutchins, would like a word with you. Uh, I don't know, Mr. Hutchins. Why should you want to talk to me? No, please don't make any trouble. I could call the guard and have you escorted upstairs. You wouldn't want me to do that now, would you? Guard? Well, why? What have I done? I think you know exactly what you've done now. Will you uh, please come with me quietly? Uh, right in here, please. It's a mistake. I did take the scarf, but I was going to pay for it. Uh, here's the lady, Mr. Hutchins. All right, Bill, thanks. You uh, want me to stick around? No, 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 it's all right. Okay, then I'll get back on the floor. It's murder down there. <laughs> More larceny than murder, I'd say. Uh, right. Please uh, sit down. Mr. Hutchins, I, I know it looks like I took the scarf deliberately, but really so I did You were going to pay for it at another counter. Is that the idea? No, I... I wanted to match the color with the purses, and that's why I put the scarf in my bag. I wanted to go over to the handbag section. Would you mind telling me your name? I'm not a shoplifter, so help me, I'm not. My name is Ruth Martin. Is it Mrs. Martin? Look at me. Can't you tell I'm not a thief? I don't even know why I took this scarf. It's just a cheap little thing. It's not at all like the clothes I wear. Well, look at me. Can't you tell? Would you wait just one moment, Mrs. Martin? What's that you've got? Oh, it's just a little handbook we keep, sort of a private record book. You see, uh, most of the retailers in this city cooperate in these matters, supplying each other with the names of known kleptomaniacs. I'm sure you've heard that word before. I am not a thief. Well, that's what I'm trying to determine, Mrs. Martin. 
Since there is a significant difference between shoplifters and kleptos, the difference, of course, being our ability to prosecute, since one steals for gain and one because, well, because she can't help it. No, I'm afraid I don't see any Ruth Martin in the book. All right. It's Moody. Pardon? My real name is Mrs. Ruth Moody. I... I didn't want to give you my real name. I, I didn't want my husband to know Moody. about this. Uh, yes, yes, here it is. Ferraro's. Three spools of thread. Pearl buttons from Wilkins and Smith. Oh, the last time it was a handbag. Awful, ugly, beaded thing. It wasn't even worth more than five or six dollars. Are you going to call my husband? Is that what happens at these other places? Yes. Oh, it was awful. Please, I have the money to pay for the scarf. I'll gladly pay you twice what it was worth. Please don't let him know it happened again. Don't you think it's best that he know? Maybe he'll try to help you over the problem. Don't make me beg you. My husband has a job in the city government, a very important Mrs. job. Mrs. Moody, I'm not interested in causing you any trouble, believe me. Look, here, take this scarf back. Well, what's this? N uh, nothing. Uh, some costume jewelry that no, I bought in Mrs. another... Oh, Mrs. Moody, you didn't buy this any more than you bought the scarf. It still has the price tag on it. $1.95. That's what makes it so unbelievable, Ruth. A $1.95 rhinestone pin. I don't know why I took it, Ralph. Any more than I know what drove me to pick up that awful scarf and just drop it in my bag. It's just like those other times. Yes, but you swore to me that those other times would never be repeated. Well, I thought it was over. I really did. I don't understand what goes on in your mind when you do these crazy things. I don't know. It's just an impulse. It seems so terribly easy that things are just sitting out in the open the way they are, and I, I never even stop to think if I like it. Just if I can get away with it. But you never do. You get caught. Maybe... Maybe that's part of the sickness, too, huh? Oh, stop saying I'm sick. I'm not. I'm not. Well, what would you call it? <laughs> Look, honey, you, you've got to see a doctor. I've told you that a dozen times. I will times. not go to a doctor. I can't stand the idea of it, Ralph. Just talk to one. Give them a chance. Maybe it's something... something simple. Maybe... Maybe you're just trying to get punished because of guilt feelings that you can't resolve. Oh, you're wrong about wanting to get caught. I don't. I swear I don't. I've gotten away with a dozen things. What? What was that? Nothing. I don't want to talk about it anymore. And it isn't just three, four times that this has been going on. You're probably out there shoplifting every single day. It's not true. I almost never go into the stores for exactly that reason. All right, Ruth. I... With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. Ch -ch -ch -chumba. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch -ch -chumba. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, believe it by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. It settles it. You are going to talk to a doctor. Then, uh, you do remember the first time you stole Mrs. Moody? Yes. I remember very well, but... But it was something I really wanted then, Dr. Berger. That was the big difference. Mm. How old were you? I was about eight or nine. I was in school. There was a girl named Fanny Ritter. Her family was very wealthy. She was always the best-dressed girl in the class. Oh, yes, yes. She had this pencil box. It was absolutely beautiful, with a blue binding and 
all sorts of secret compartments. I wanted that pencil box so much. And one day I, I walked into an empty classroom and there it was, lying on the seat. Yes, and uh, were you caught? No, I was never caught. Mm -hmm. But that was the biggest thrill of all, not being caught. But then I, I also realized I couldn't use the pencil box, at least not at school. Yes, yes, I see. All kids steal sometimes. There's nothing abnormal about it. But uh, you're not a child now, are you? And yet, you still crave this secret feeling, this secret gratification. No, you're wrong. I don't get any pleasure out of taking things. I feel terrible afterwards, every single time. Ah, but that may be exactly the gratification you require. I don't want to hear any more. You sound just like my husband. Believe me, Mrs. Moody, neither your husband nor I want to find fault with you. We both want to help you. Well, it's his job my husband is worried about, not me. Why do you say that? Because he works for the city government in the controller's office and... He's afraid if they ever found out about me that he... Why am I talking about Ralph that way? <laughs> I know he loves me. I know he wants to help me. Yes. So why don't you let him try? Let both of us try. No. I don't need a doctor. All I need is to... stay out of department stores. <laughs> Mrs. Moody? Yes? Uh, hi, Mrs. Moody. Uh, you don't know me, but my name is Tom Andrea. Uh, there's something I have to talk to you about. I know exactly what it is. Encyclopedias. <laughs> or is it magazine subscriptions? Uh, no, ma'am. It's uh, nothing like that. Well, whatever it is, I I'm not interested. It's about department stores. What? You know, stores where people buy things and uh, take things, too, sometimes. Are you from Barnett's? No, Mrs. Moody, I don't work for Barnett's or for Wilkins and Smith or any of those places that you like to uh, shop in. Uh, look, it's uh, pretty drafty out here. Uh, can I come in for a minute? All right. Thank you. Uh, your husband's not home, I suppose. Uh, I mean, it's a working day, so he's at work, right? Oh, that's clever thinking. <laughs> can we uh, talk in here? Only if you get right to the point. Well, now, look, this ain't the kind of thing you like to just blurt out. I mean, I mean, it's kind of sensitive. You, you know what I mean? No, I don't. I mean, it's about you and your husband and so forth. If you think about it for a while, you'll get my meaning. Am I right? You'll have to be more specific. Well, you just won't come out with it yourself, huh? Okay, I'll say it for you. I'm talking about you being a shoplifter. That's a lie. Whoever told you that is a liar. No, 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 no. It's wait, true. Wait a minute. If you think you can blackmail me by telling my husband... No, no, Mrs. Moody. We know that your husband knows all about it. He's been getting you out of jams for years. Then what do you want here? Well, believe it or not, I want to give you money. I don't want to take any from you. What for? Services rendered. What? <laughs> I got a little proposition for you, Mrs. Moody. How would you like to make a thousand bucks? A thousand dollars? How? Well, you do like I tell you. You'll get a thousand bucks in the mail. But if you don't, well, your husband may not be able to make a living anymore. You uh, get what I mean? No. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about stealing stuff, Mrs. Moody. About that bad habit of yours. Now, we got a use for that habit. And you'd better listen to what we have in mind. How did you know about me? Who told you about me? Well, let's just say I got sources. I swear to you, I'm not a thief. Yeah, yeah, sure, I know that. We know it. We? Well, me and my friend. We know you're just a sick lady that you can't help what you do. It's... Well, it's just like you had pneumonia or hay fever. It's, it's not your fault. Am I right? That's right. 
Yeah, well, it's fine, only your husband still don't want the people around City Hall to know he's got a klepto for a wife, does he? Then this is blackmail. A man in his line of work, he can't afford to have people know his wife steals. Now, some people would understand how it's only a sickness. But others, well, you know how people are. Tell me how much money you want. I don't want a dime from you, Mrs. Moody. Honest, all I want is your cooperation. You see, my friend and me, we, um, we have a little plan. A really, really sweet little idea. Everybody makes money and nobody takes any chances. Well, what could be sweeter than that? A plan to do what, for heaven's sake? Well, my friend will give you all the details. All you got to do now is put on your coat and come with me. My friend will give you the whole deal. I'm not coming with you. We're not desperate for your help. Don't get this wrong. But we thought we'd give you a break. Well, oh, it's too bad. If, if you'd just tell me what you have in mind. Why, shoplifting, Mrs. Moody. A little nice and easy shoplifting. Only this time, not for no $5 piece of junk. This time for something worth more like $50,000. <laughs> have a way of multiplying themselves, don't they? And as you've just heard, the trouble with Bruce has suddenly developed serious complications. Will Mrs. Moody's unwilling petty larceny turn into a larceny of the grand variety? We'll find out when we return shortly with Act Two. And now another story of the ball and chain as Kellogg's Special K presents Veronica and Jeff. Oh, Jeffrey, isn't this romantic? Out in a quiet lake at night with you rowing the boat. Yes, Veronica, it's really neat. Jeffrey, what was that? Uh, frogs. Frogs that go bong? Uh, they're pretty weird frogs. Oh, Jeffrey, you're such a car. You have a ball and chain. Like the ones they use in those Special K commercials. Yes, Veronica, it symbolizes my few pounds of extra weight. But I'm going to get rid of it. How? Uh, by exercising. You know, like rowing this boat and eating smart at every meal, starting with a Special K breakfast. You mean a one-ounce bowl of high-protein Special K, four ounces of skim milk, orange juice, and coffee? Uh, precisely. It's less than 240 calories, and it tastes delicious. It'll help me get rid of this ball and chain. I'll help, too, Jeff. After all, we're all in the same boat. <gasps> you have a ball and chain, too. <laughs> Your happy ending could begin with a Special K breakfast from Kellogg's. The Northwest and its outdoor-oriented residents share more of Mother Nature than a lot of people in the USA. Somehow we get acclimatized by our willingness to sail, fish, camp, and hunt in the natural environment. Sony has developed television portables in color in black and white that make leisure and recreational experiences more enjoyable. Sony has combined solid-state electronics to create the finest portable TV sets available. Sony portable features include AC-DC circuitry, optional battery pack, and plug-in cords to boats, campers, and auto power systems. The glare-free screen is really great, too, when the sun finally comes out. Audio sales at 2405 Broadway in Everett is your full-line Sony television dealer. Dick Alkire and his sales staff are real outdoor enthusiasts. They know what Sony portable TV sets can do for folks who work and play in the Northwest environment. It's a nice way to enjoy the great outdoors or the many moods of Mother Nature. Mrs. Ruth Moody, faced with the prospect of harming her husband's career, has accepted the invitation of the man who calls himself Tom Andrea. Although her instincts tell her that Tom Andrea isn't his name at all. As they drive towards their unknown destination, she steals sidelong glances at him, noting the copper sheen of his skin, the look of a man who has spent far too many hours under a sunlamp, 
but he also has the look of a man who won't take no for an answer. Can't you tell me where we're going? Now, uh, relax, Mrs. Moody. It won't be long now. Who is this friend of yours, anyway? You all meet him. He works for a department store, doesn't he? I know they keep records of people like... well, of kleptomania victims. That's the only way you could have found out about me. I just lean back and enjoy the ride, huh? Aren't you afraid I might recognize him if he's one of the people that I've met? Here we are, Mrs. Moody. I told you it wasn't very far. The Hotel Hamilton. Looks like a fire trap. Well, it's not very fancy, but it's private. We can all have a nice, quiet talk. Just the three of us. <laughs> You, Tom? Yeah, it's me. The lady with you? Yep, she's here. Just a second, then. Oh, I... Uh, no, no, don't, don't be scared, Mrs. Moody. My friend doesn't really look like that. He's just got a stocking over his face. Come in. I, uh, hope you will forgive the mask, Mrs. Moody. I know it looks grotesque, but it's necessary. For your own protection. For me? It's important that you don't recognize me after our business is concluded. It would be embarrassing if we were to run into each other in uh, different circumstances. In a department store, for instance? What my friend means, Mrs. Moody, is that if you started hollering for the cops when you saw him again, we uh, would have to do something about you. Understand? Yes, I... I understand. But please don't be alarmed. Nothing like that's going to happen. I can assure you that I am not a professional criminal. No more than you are. Then what kind of criminal are you? Why don't you sit down? The sofa's the only comfortable seat in the room. Here, let me take these papers away. I was just drawing up a few diagrams to help you understand exactly what you have to do. Diagrams? Would you like some coffee? We have a small kitchen. There's a pot already made. No, 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 I don't want any coffee. Tom, why don't you do the honors? Do you drink yours black, Mrs. Moody? I'm afraid I don't have any cream. All right, uh, black coffee. Oh, I see, Mrs. Moody. I told you it was going to be very friendly. Well, now, uh, how much has Tom told you about our little enterprise? He just said that if I didn't help you, you'd tell my husband's employers about me. Well, I really hate for that to be the inducement, Mrs. Moody. I was hoping that uh, you'd cooperate more willingly. Why should I? Well, didn't Tom mention the thousand dollars? He also mentioned something about fifty thousand dollars, about shoplifting something worth a fortune. <laughs> Don't tell me you have qualms about it. A lady with your history? <laughs> you just don't understand about me. I don't take things because they're valuable or even because I want them. I'm not a thief. Not in the ordinary sense of the word. Yes, yes, we, we know that. And that's exactly why we're taking you into our little circle, Mrs. Moody, because you're a kleptomaniac, not an ordinary thief. And that's why you can help us commit an extraordinary crime. But I don't want to commit a crime, and I don't want your thousand dollars. Here's your coffee, Mrs. Moody. Let me tell you what makes it so different, Mrs. Moody. An ordinary crime entails a certain amount of risk. But this particular crime is guaranteed to be risk-free. Oh, that's what people always think. No, Mrs. Moody. Even professional criminals recognize a certain degree of chance when they plan their enterprises. Personally, I would never get involved in anything like that. I loathe the idea of being arrested. Well, so do I. And I know exactly what it feels ah, like. Ah, but you've never been arrested, have you? You've been detained, questioned, reprimanded, warned, but you've never been arrested once. Isn't that true? Well, why should I be? I told you, I'm not a criminal. No, you're not legally liable for your little thefts, Mrs. Moody. You steal because you have to steal. And if you're caught, you merely give back what you've stolen, and that's that. No arrest, no prosecution, no risk. 
You beginning to see the point, Mrs. Moody? You want me to steal something for you. That's right, Mrs. Moody. And something a great deal more valuable than, shall we say, spool thread. Oh, dear Lord. Let me explain our plan in detail. At 12.15 tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow? At 12.15. You'll enter a shop called Travel's on 47th Street, just off 5th Avenue. You may not know the place. It's a rather expensive jeweler's. You will approach a certain counter. The diagram will make it clear which one I... Wait a minute. You're talking as if I've already agreed to do this thing. Please look at the diagram, Mrs. Moody. You will approach this counter and engage the attention of the salesman. You will ask to see a certain tray. The one I've marked with the arrow. A moment or two after you begin to examine that tray, there will be a disturbance in the store. Uh, right. A disturbance. The disturbance will take place on the other side of the counter. It is almost inevitable that your salesman will have his attention drawn away from you when it occurs. In all likelihood, he'll leave you and go to see what has happened. That's when you will act. You'll pick... With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Up the diamond pin on the upper right-hand corner of the tray and drop it into your purse. And then you'll simply walk out the door. You're really mad. As you can see from the drawing, the distance between the counter and the door is a very short one. You can reach it within three or four seconds. You can be sure that your salesman will be much too occupied to notice that you have left. I won't do any such thing. That's plain and simple robbery. When you reach the outside, you'll see a man with a yellow canister collecting funds for children's welfare. The man will approach you immediately. You will drop the diamond pin into the opening of the canister and walk to the corner. There will be a taxi there in all probability. It's a hack stand. If there isn't a taxi waiting, hail one or walk to the bus stop. Believe me. You will have ample time to make your getaway. There isn't going to be any getaway. I am not going to do anything so insane. As I said before, you'll be perfectly safe. You'll have absolutely nothing to lose. If you're stopped before you reach the exit, simply give yourself up. When Travels learns of your little uh, idiosyncrasy, no harm will come to you. It'll be just another neurotic incident, nothing more. You're wasting your breath. You'll tell them about your problem. They'll check with other stores and find your case history on file. No, there's no way I'll do such a thing. Hey, what's but the matter with you, lady? Didn't you hear the man? You can't get into trouble doing this. But your husband will if you don't. Let me out of here, please. Pick someone else out of those files. <sighs> All right, Tom. If that's how Mrs. Moody wants it. Then I can go. The door was always open, lady. See? But if you change your mind, Mrs. Moody, just call me here at the Hotel Hamilton. Just ask for room 408. But if I don't hear from you tonight, well, you know what we'll have to do. You've sure been quiet tonight, Ruth. Have I? You, uh... You didn't go out today, did you? No. I told you I wasn't going anywhere. I was just wondering. I mean, you said something about dinner tonight, about cooking something special, and... <laughs> here we are with last night's meatloaf. But you said you didn't mind. Oh, of course, I don't mind. You know I'm not fussy about food. I know. You're just... too nice for your own good sometimes, Ralph. And, uh, you just weren't feeling up to cooking today, is that it? Oh, I know what you're thinking. You think I went on another shopping spree, or should I say shoplifting? No, Ruth, I didn't think anything of the kind. Well, I didn't. I swear I didn't. Okay, okay. Ralph, can I ask you something? 
Sure. What... What would happen if... if people knew about me? What people? The people you work for. In the controller's office. Or, um... The mayor himself. What if they knew about my... Uh, illness? They'd know, that's all. Would it hurt you? Honey, this is silly. Nobody knows about your problem. But you and me and a few department stores. And Dr. Berger, of course. The doctor you won't see anymore. But if they were to find out, would it hurt you? Look, haven't we got enough to worry about without thinking the worst? Then it would be bad for you. Someone in your position where honesty is so important. Ruth, you're not dishonest. You're sick. There's a tremendous difference. That's why I'm so sorry you won't see that doctor. But, but would everyone understand the difference? I mean, when they learned about my stealing things, would they think twice about you? You want the truth? Yes. Yes, they would. They're only human. No, no, they're worse than human. They're politicians. They have to be elected to office. And that's exactly the kind of scandal they don't like. Yes. I guess I've always known that was true. Um, honey, I think I could use some more gravy. Yes. Oh, I have some in the kitchen. I'll be right back. Is this the Hotel Hamilton? Room 408, please. <laughs> So, Mrs. Ruth Moody has taken the first fatal step. And tomorrow at noon, she'll take several more steps to the doors of Travel's jewelry. And for the first time in her life, Ruth will steal and know the reason why she's stealing. Will it really make a difference? I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Hi! Goldilocks, Miss Goldilocks, if you please, and I'm a professional taste tester here at my taste test laboratory, that's TTL for short, <laughs> I taste test everything from porridge to diet drinks. Actually, there's not that much taste testing in porridge these days. There used to be once upon a time. I mean, that's how this Miss got into the biz. <laughs> but lately, it's been diet drinks. I mean, with so many diet drinks going sugar-free, I've been really busy conducting taste tests. A rather unbearable assignment, to be sure. But then I discovered sugar-free diet 7-Up. Fresh, natural, delicious. My only problem is that sugar-free diet 7-Up tastes so good that it broke my Goldilocks diet drink taste -a meter Well, sugar-free diet 7-Up certainly has my seal of approval. This one's just right. When you shop at your friendly Tradewell store, there's never any mystery about the values you receive. Tradewell offers the best food, the best selection, the best service, and at the best possible price. So don't be mystified about shopping for food. Shop at your friendly Tradewell store and stretch your food dollar without sacrificing quality. Here are some outstanding values this week at your friendly Tradewell. USDA Prime or Choice Beef Blade Pot Roast, 65 cents a pound. Fresh pork loin end roast, cut from 14 to 17 pound loins, three to five pound average, 88 cents a pound. Welcome ice cream in assorted flavors, one half gallon, 68 cents. Regular or diet Shasta Pop assorted flavors, 12 ounce tins, nine for one dollar. Shop Tradewell for quality with economy. Tradewell is headquarters for USDA Prime Beef. At 11.30 the next morning, Mrs. Ruth Moody left her apartment and took a Fifth Avenue bus to 47th Street. None of the other passengers saw anything unusual in her expression. 
They couldn't read the turmoil of her thoughts or the fear that haunted her eyes behind the sunglasses she wore to hide them. She kept telling herself that what the man in the stocking mask said was only too true, that no matter what happened, she couldn't be blamed for what she was about to do. She was still telling herself that when she pushed open the heavy glass door of Travel's. May I help you, madam? Oh, uh, yes, please. I'm looking for a diamond pen. It's a present for my mother. I see. Uh, do you have any particular kind of pen in mind? We have everything from abstract designs to representational pins. You know, animals and flowers and so forth. Mm. Maybe if I just uh, browsed a little? Certainly. You can see some of our selection right here, but uh, we do have others. Oh, yes. There's so many, aren't there? Of course, it would help if you knew the price range. Oh, mm. uh, oh. well, the price isn't important. It's just that the pen be right. Yes, I see. Um, this tray right here, on the first shelf. Yes. Well, that seems to have quite a few nice pens. Yes, I'll bring it out for you. Actually, these are some of the best stones in our collection. You have good taste. They really do sparkle, don't they? This is uh, what I made by representational. As you can see, it's in the shape of a cat. Oh, well, no, no. My, my mother hates cats. I think maybe just something no, the other one was simple. Oh, uh, you uh, just take your time. All right. Thank you. What was that? Someone smashed one of my cases. Excuse me. Terribly sorry. I, I, I clumsy thing to do. It's, it's all my fault. I was holding my umbrella under my arm that just slipped out and hit the glass. Now, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I've got to do it now. I, I really don't know. It's all right. All right. I've just got step it. back, please. Uh, Bob, would you lend a hand over here? There's glass all over the merchandise. I feel dreadful about this. I, it's I quite really all right, sir. Mind. No harm done at all, I assure you. Oh. I've done it. I've really done it. Outside. Help the needy children. Help the needy children, lady. What? Please, help the Children's Welfare Society, lady. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Here. That's all I have. Thanks very, very much, lady. Thanks a lot. Help the needy children. Is that you? Yes, I'm home. Oh. How are you, honey? Uh, I'm all right. You sure? You don't look so good. No, no, I'm, I'm fine, really. Would you like a drink? Yeah, I wouldn't mind, thanks. Um, what'd you do today? I went out for a little while. Where to? Oh, no, in particular, I took a walk. Weather was nice. Uh huh. Took some things to the cleaners. Did a little marketing. Here's your drink. Oh, thanks. For heaven's sake, stop looking at me like that. I can't bear the way you look at me sometimes, Ralph. I'm sorry, Ruth. It's nothing deliberate. Well, of course it's deliberate. It happens all the time now. You keep staring at me as if you're trying to read my mind. As if you wanted me to confess something. Now, Ruth, that isn't true. You've got to stop thinking such things every time I look at you. What's going to happen to us, Ralph? What kind of marriage are we going to have from now on? Ruth, we've been married six years now. I think we know how to live with each other. But you can't live with this disease of mine. You can never stop suspecting me of having stolen something again. Isn't that what you're thinking right now? All I'm thinking about is that you don't look well. And how disappointed I am that you won't see Dr. Berger. I... I called him today, by the way. What for? Well, I just wanted to talk to him, find out if... if there was anything more I could do to help you. And what did he say? He said there might be. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, I, I told Berger about our talk last night, about... How worried you are that the people at City Hall might find out about, about your illness. Now, he told me that was an important part of your guilt syndrome. 
whatever that means. Oh, I hate that psychiatric double talk. Well, just the same, he, he thought you'd be a lot better off if you weren't concerned about such things. If you were able to admit that you were ill. I do admit it. That doesn't mean that other people have to know about it. Ruth. I told them. What? I told McGuire, the controller. I took him out to lunch. I told him all about your kleptomania. Oh, no, Ralph. Oh, no. Oh, look, I, I began to realize that I was hiding it, too, that I wasn't treating it like an illness, either. That I was acting as if it were something shameful. What did you do it for? For us, Ruth. But now you'll lose your job. No, I'm not going to lose my job. It's going to be all right. But you said... No, I know all the dumb things I said last night about how this sort of thing can hurt a politician. Well, I was wrong. McGuire is more of a human being than a politician. You mean he's not going to tell anyone else? He won't give me away? No, that's not what I meant. McGuire suggested that we both go and talk to the mayor himself about this. Oh, Ralph, you can't. I already have, Ruth. What? I've seen the mayor. You know what he said? He said that it wouldn't make any difference to him this year or next year when he recommends me for the number one job in the controller's office. The number one? That's right. McGuire is moving up. I'm next in line for his job. And the mayor is behind me now, Ruth. Do you think he'd be behind me if he really thought my wife was a thief? Oh, dear Lord. Ruth. Oh, what have I done? What have I honey, done? Honey, honey, what is it? Oh, why did I go through with it? What's the matter, Ruth? I just told you everything's okay. Oh, no, no. I've ruined everything now, Ralph. <laughs> if you knew what a horrible thing I did today, you'd be... <laughs> what are you talking about? I am a thief now. God help me, Ralph. I really am a thief. <laughs> Try and stay calm, Ruth. Did you get a look at the man who broke the glass with his umbrella? Do you think that he was the same man you met yesterday at the Hotel Hamilton? I'm sure he was. But I told you he was wearing a stocking mask over his face. And this, this other man, though, the one who called himself Tom Andrea. He was the same man who was collecting for children's welfare outside the store. Yes. Ruth... You know, there's only one thing to do now, don't you? What do you mean? We've got to tell the police. Oh, Ralph, no, that would be awful. Travels will have discovered the theft by now. They, they must have your description from the clerk. Sooner or later, you might be identified. But they can't do anything to me, Ralph. I'm not responsible. I'm sick. No, Ruth, it... in this case, you are responsible. That's why we have to call the police. Mrs. Moody, here's the typed statement you gave us. Can I go home after I sign it? Yes, yes, of course. But uh, better read it over first. What happens after that, Lieutenant Ames? That depends. On what? Well, mostly on whether or not your wife has told us everything. But I swear I have. I'm not saying your story is phony, Mrs. Moody. My own viewpoint is that it's too cockeyed to be phony. But uh, that may be a subtle way of looking at it. Why should she lie about this, Lieutenant? What would my wife have to gain? Well, she could stand to gain a diamond pin worth almost 50,000 bucks. But she doesn't have the diamond. She gave it to them. Yes, that's a story. But uh, let's say, for example, that those two men never existed. Oh, that's a horrible thing to say. I'm telling you how other people might see this thing. If you were a crook, and you realize that you'd been spotted in Travell's? Well, this story of yours would put you in the clear, wouldn't it? But it's true. Every word of it. But you see the problem, don't you? You've been identified as the robber. You've confessed to stealing the pin. The fact that you're a known kleptomaniac doesn't help. 
some people might even be nasty enough to say that you got yourself that reputation deliberately. This is incredible. You're accusing my wife of being a thief. Oh, what can I say to convince you? If you could only give me a better description of those two men. Well, I've done the best I could. The first man, he was of average height, dark hair, very sunburned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep telling me about that sunburn. But that's not going to last very long, is it? Lieutenant, you think that sunburn was a kind of disguise? I'm sure it was, Mr. Moody. All right. And the other man, he wore a stocking mask. There's no way I can describe him. Now, what about the hotel, Lieutenant? No good. It's a kind of a dump which doesn't even bother to keep a register, even though it's a city ordinance. But the clerk might be able to identify the man who took the room. Maybe, if we could produce him. Only, uh, how do we do that? Uh, what about the thousand dollars they promised to send her? Oh, I wouldn't count on that. If she's telling the truth, you'll never hear from him again. Okay, so maybe it's a new gimmick. Maybe one of them works in a department store, has access to the names of recognized kleptos. But I'm sure he did work in a department store. Yeah, and so do thousands of people, Miss Moody. All you've got to do is name the one. And if she can't, what happens then? I think you know the answer to that. Will I be arrested? But you can't arrest her. She's sick. She was seeing a doctor. And I'm going to see him again. Oh, oh, so help me, Ralph. Do you really mean that, Ruth? I'm... I'm not going to stop seeing Dr. Berger until I'm cured. Unless they send me to prison first. Well, have you read the statement, Miss Moody? Yes. Yes, it's all right. I'm ready to sign it. Fine. Now, yeah, let's see, uh... Thought I had a pen on this desk. Oh, well, I think there's one in my purse. I'll get it. Hey, it's funny. What is? Well, this isn't your pen, Ruth. I don't recognize it, do you? Let me see. No? No, that isn't my pen. Oh, Ruthie, no, not again. You mean you stole it, Mrs. Moody? I'm afraid I did. I... I remember now when the man was drawing the diagrams of the jewelry store, he left his pen on the coffee table and I... I just couldn't stop myself. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You stole his pen, the man in the stocking mask? Yes. Will you arrest me for that, too? Let me see it. Miss Moody, do you realize there's a name on this pen? It's from Barnett's Department Store, and it's engraved with the name of the owner. What? Barnett's Department Store, J.M. Hutchins. Hutchins? He's the assistant manager. He is the one. Lieutenant, you found your man. <laughs> well, what do you know? This is the first time I've ever seen a proof of that old chestnut. Old chestnut? That it takes a thief to catch a thief. <laughs> of this story might be never steal anything small, particularly if it's a diamond pin worth $50,000. Will you be happy to know that the police investigation proved the guilt of Mr. J.M. Hutchins and the innocence of Mrs. Ruth Moody? And the last we heard, the only trouble with Ruth was going to be a little one. I'll be back shortly. Look, let's put an end to all this gloomy-sounding stuff you've been getting so much of lately. Income tax is behind us, spring is here, Aaron's hit number 715, and there's even reason for hope with the gasoline thing. It's in this new spirit that I'd like to talk to you about buying a new car. It's a small car, one you can judge sanely, and not just in terms of how many miles per gallon it gives you. The car is a Buick, a Buick Apollo. Like any self-respecting small car, it is economical. It's got a six-cylinder engine and a 21-gallon gas tank, which combine to give Apollo good gas economy and great range. But Apollo can also seat six passengers, and it has the kind of smoothness, quietness, and interior comfort that you'd expect of a Buick. Okay, you're looking for a car, and you think it should be small. Well, Buick has the car, Apollo. But don't buy it because it's small. Buy it because it's a Buick. 
you've seen the Budweiser commercials on television, and maybe you've wondered how long people have been putting that famous Bud label on things. Well, not as long as the brewers of Bud have been putting things on the label. Things like a list of Bud's most important ingredients. Quote, brewed by our original process from the choicest hops, rice, and best barley malt. And things like the following statement. This is the famous Budweiser beer. We know of no brand produced by any other brewer, which costs so much to brew and age. Our exclusive Beechwood aging produces a taste, a smoothness, and a drinkability you'll find in no other beer at any price. Unquote. Yes, brewing beer right does make a difference. Read the Bud label. Taste the king of beers. And you'll agree, when you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. We hope you've enjoyed our story, and we hope your reception has been as good as the reception we've been getting at the Radio Mystery Theater. In case you haven't heard, we're attracting millions of listeners all over the country. Yes, television has its rabbit ears, but we have human ears. Thank you for lending them to us. Our cast included Marion Seldes, George Petrie, Jack Grimes, Jackson Beck, and Gil Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the Sinus Medicines, Buick Motor Division, and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Listen to Mystery Theater again tomorrow night, same time, same station. Tune for the news next. KIXI dial 91 AM or 96 FM, Seattle. 12 midnight. CBS News. 11,000 mass transit workers have gone on strike in Chicago, the first total shutdown of that city's public transit facilities. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. In just a few hours, about two million people will have to find other ways of getting around in Chicago, the nation's second largest city. There were long talks aimed at settling the transit workers' dispute, but they broke down late Thursday night. A dispute over cost of living increases is a major issue. Chicago police are bracing for a massive traffic jam as commuters turn to their cars. Taxi companies are gearing up for what looks like a very busy day for the Chicago cabbies. More news after this message. Painting the walls may be the least expensive way to change a room's decorating scheme. This week, True Value Hardware stores make it even less expensive. It's National True Test Paint Week. You can take your pick of a couple of True Test Supreme Interior Latex paints at very special savings. Hi, Pat Summerall here with the details. Satin Hue Latex Flat, for example. 
It goes on smoothly without dripping, without painty odor. It hides well, dries fast, and tools clean up in soapy water. Choose from 48 colors and white for only $5.97 a gallon. True Value Hardware stores have True Test Marveluster Latex Semi-Gloss Paint, too. Marveluster is ideal for walls and kitchens and bathrooms because it resists grease, steam, and moisture. Get True Test Marveluster Latex Semi-Gloss for only $6.99 a gallon. Take your pick of paints this week during National True Test Paint Week exclusively at participating True Value Hardware stores. He's in the yellow pages. Israeli warplanes Thursday struck at least five Palestinian camps and three border villages in Lebanon. It was in retaliation for Wednesday's Arab guerrilla attack on an Israeli town, which left 24 persons dead. Palestinian leaders are already promising revenge for the Israeli raids. The Israeli strikes have also drawn a strong response from Egypt. Bob Ellison reports from Cairo. Egypt's foreign minister said that Arab countries will not stand still for Israeli aggressive raids on Palestinian refugee camps in Lebanon. Ismail Thami described the Israeli attack as a serious escalation in the tense situation in the Middle East. He called on the international community to condemn the Israeli action. Despite the foreign minister's warning, there is little feeling that Egypt will intervene at this time in the conflict between the Palestinians and Israel. But she is expected to press for condemnation by the United Nations of the Israeli raid. Bob Allison, CBS News, Cairo. Former Attorney General Richard Kleindees faces a minimum of one month in jail and possible disbarment following his guilty plea Thursday on charges of refusing to answer Senate questions about the ITT case. Kleindees says the second cabinet member in history to be convicted of a crime. According to court papers filed on Thursday, Watergate prosecutor Leon Jaworski has found no evidence that President Nixon authorized the 1971 burglary of the office of Daniel Ellsberg's psychiatrist or knew about plans to make the burglary. Jaworski rejected claims by defendants in the case that the raid was condoned by the president and was undertaken to protect national security. Jaworski and lengthy briefs filed with the courts and members of the White House Plumbers Unit acted on their own illegally. The House Judiciary Committee met again in closed session Thursday night to listen to some more White House tapes. Several committee members said afterwards that President Nixon did use racial slurs in some of his remarks. Presidential Attorney James St. Clair Thursday asked the committee to open its hearings to the public. St. Clair saying the White House is unhappy with news leaks from the committee's closed-door sessions. Chairman Peter Rodino refused the question of opening the hearings to the public, but he did say he is taking steps to plug the news leaks. The French presidential campaign will be all over in a few hours. On Sunday, the voters will make the decision. The choices are Valérie Giscard d'Estaing, a conservative, and François Mitterrand, a socialist. The government of Jamaica has hiked export taxes on bauxite and aluminum exports by almost $200 million a year. The action drove the prices of aluminum stocks down Thursday on the New York Stock Exchange. Now this. I want that sinus medicine. Headache tablets? No, sinus medicine. Sinus tablets. Helps the headache and the pressure. Oh, you mean sign off. Exactly. Headache pain is one thing. A sinus headache is something else. Sometimes your whole face can seem to throb with pain. You want relief. Take sign off tablets. S-I-N-E-O-F-F. -F, the sinus medicine that gives you a full dose of pure aspirin plus a sinus drainer. Sign off. The sinus medicine that helps relieve sinus pain while you drain. And Sinoff doesn't stop there. Have you tried Sinoff Sinus Spray, the fastest known form of sinus congestion relief? It works in seconds. That's Sinoff Sinus Spray. When sinus flares up, use Sinoff tablets and spray only as directed. S-I-N-E-O-F-F. -F. Sinoff. Exactly. Sinoff, the sinus medicines in the bright red box. In case you've never gone to a theater to see the 1939 film classic Gone with the Wind, you might be able to see it on TV next year. UPI reports NBC TV has paid $5 million for the right to a single TV showing next year of Gone with the Wind. If it's true, this is the highest price a network has ever paid for a single program. Doug Poling, CBS News. CBS for the Great Northwest, KIXI, AM and FM, Seattle. 
The weather outlook for Seattle, Tacoma, Everett, and vicinity continued cool. A few showers and chance of isolated thundershower tonight. Chance of showers tomorrow and Saturday with partial clearing at times. Lows in the low 40s tonight and tomorrow night. High is tomorrow and Saturday in the upper 50s. Variable winds 5 to 15 miles an hour. 49 degrees downtown, 45 at SeaTac.